today we're detecting at a family member's house. My Uncle Glenn's. It's been in his family for either or around 50 years or so. Looking forward to it. It's late in the day. We got here earlier in the afternoon and we went to help out her uncle find the uh, survey markers on his property. We ended up finding them. It took us a while and it was raining and we had a good time talking about the area and the history with, with her uncle Glenn, so it's all good. And uh, so we're just starting to detect right now. I've been pulling up a few pieces of scrap aluminum here and there. Um, nothing major, uh, but I just got my first, what looks like a, either, it looks like a large penny, large penny size actually right in the sidewall a bit and uh, yeah so this was only down at the four inches we've detected here a few years back and we actually did find quite a few old tokens and uh, tokens from the 30s too amusement amusement park tokens which were kind of cool so this will be this is the first coin here today so anyway let's see what it is <laughs> all right it's not a large penny it's a token token and it looks like I didn't scratch this one which is good it looks like a Bank of Montreal ah I don't have my glasses on me as usual but anyways I can see it Bank of Montreal Let's see if I can get a date off of it Yeah, I think it's the, uh, the 1837 Bank of Montreal. Nice. It's in really good shape, too. It's drying up as I'm looking at it. Yeah. Wow. It's been a while since I found a, uh, a bank token. So, I'm happy about that. But gotta love it. Not very deep, either. So, if there are more here, you know, we... I swung over this area a couple years back, and uh, I thought I hit it pretty good, but obviously you miss things. So, let's find some more. <laughs> Here's that. All right. So Judy called me over. She said she has something that she's not sure what it is, but now she knows what it is. So what is it? Oh, it's an umbrella slide. Oh. Broken, but an umbrella slide. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. I can see where it's broken on the top. Yeah. Yeah. The side around here is all got broken little pieces, but. Go. Cool. So a token just a few seconds, well a few seconds, a few minutes ago and uh, now she gets an umbrella slide. How deep? Three inches. Three inches down? Yeah. yeah. But I mean on this whole side, I mean that's, I don't think that's too, too bad. No. Yeah. So good. Two relics in less than 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. So, let's get some more. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yes. All right, way to go. Nice, nice dig. Okay, so this target uh, was a Definitely a good audible target, and then uh, it wasn't. And the reason why I was jumping around a little bit is because, as you can tell, it's a big giant washer, right? Big washer. Washer was on the left hand side. Then I put the dirt back in and I got another signal, and I flipped the plug out more, and that just popped out as you see it. It's dried up a little bit because I, by the time I came and put the camera on, there you go. But, anyways, I can tell it's another token. There you go. Yep. And it looks like another Bank of Montreal. It is another Bank of Montreal. Cool. I wonder if it's the same year. Oh, hi, Sheba. This is uh, Judy's Uncle Glenn's dog, Sheba. And she's been following us around for most of the day. And she wants to check it out, too. Look at that. Hey, got it up. 18. 
This one's an 1844. 1844 half penny. Cool, another token. Sweet. What do you think? Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. You can lick it. <laughs> this one's in really good shape. Nice. Oh, and on another note, these coins, this house was built at about 18, 1860, 1865. The barn has a, uh, has a uh, plaque on it, a date stone that said uh, 18, 1854 or 1852. And uh, this coin was lost probably about the same time. So the people who built this place lost these tokens. I mean, that's kind of cool, you know, to think about that. The people who built this house and the barn actually lost these coins. It's pretty uh, awesome just to be able to hold a coin that you know that was lost so long ago, right? Well, love them. Cool. Okay, so what did you get? Well, I got something in the hole. It'll dig up in a bit. Mm -hmm. But I started off with a really fantastic sound. It came up a 36, it was about four inches down, which is about oh. right. And I thought, oh, it's just a bolt, right? It's a round headed cool. bolt. But um, as I was about to clear my soil, I, uh, I uh, have round with shankage. Oh, nice. So it's a button. It's a button. Ooh, uh, flat button or is it uh, uh, in design? Uh, it looks just like a flat button. Doesn't I don't see anything written on the front and uh, oh, I'd have to clear off the back to see if it said anything, but the shank's attached. Very nice. Yeah, and now I'm curious to see what else I got in here. Cool, but again with iron, right? Hmm? This lot has a lot of iron, so yeah, the targets I know, but here are mixed I already in. found a, a button and a bolt. I'm not against finding. Oh, is it another button? No, that's a rock. <laughs> no. Could look like could look like a, like a button. Cool. All right, I'll turn I'll turn the camera back on if you find anything. Okay. All right. So it was a piece of a nail. Now that's pretty good that I found a button in amongst all of those sounds. I'm okay with that. Oh. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little example of what we're dealing with on this lawn as far as the iron is concerned. I'm going to go into all metal and then I'll let you listen and you can hear how much iron there is in the ground here and how we're nitpicking through it. But listen to this. So every squeak that you hear is an iron target. Can you hear all those? Iron. 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 So you can just imagine, there's a lot of stuff that's hiding amongst all those iron. Some of it's being masked by the iron. Other things are right beside it. So, like that uh, glass token there that had that big washer in there. I did get a squeak, but I got a repetable uh, squeak as well, and that's why I investigated it, and that one happened to be a token. A lot of these are ended up being curved nails and things like that. So, but you can just hear the lawn, it's full of them. So, it's a little tough, but it's definitely doable. Look at that, another one right there. Wow. And I'm not digging everything. <laughs> Imagine digging every signal here. Look, I'd be digging this up. It's iron. I'd be digging that one up. I'd be digging that one up. I'd be digging that one up. So, there you go. I think Judy's chasing a deep iron target, but it could be it could be conductive, it could be something else, but she's still uh She's still digging away. This is big, otherwise I would have gotten it by now. Digging to China. Found it.
So I'm hunting with the E-Track and uh, right now I'm hunting with, uh, I'll show you. I'm hunting with the Iron Mask. And it's at about set, set at about uh, a little bit over one quarter of my screen, which is probably, you really think out of 100. Probably at about 35 out of 100 on my Iron Mask. And uh, I have my sensitivities up full, but on automatic. And right now it's hitting a 20. Hitting about a 20, but I'm at like a plus three. Plus three above 20. So that's roughly what I'm hunting at with this thing right now. Kind of helps me out in the iron, so I'm not hearing every iron target. I mean, if you listen to what you were listening to before, now that I have my iron mask on, listen what it sounds like now. You still get a chirp, but you don't get a, you don't get a repetable chirp. See, I, I go back, back and forth, nothing. But before, in all metal, I'll put it back in all metal. And I get it repetable in all metal. But an iron mask, I'm not. It's not very repetable. So that's why I just continue on. When I get a squeak on this thing, I'll continue. But if I squeaks both ways, I'm digging it. Okay, as usual, Judy's going to what? Kill you. <laughs> oh my. Ooh. All right, Sheba, I won't kill him. <laughs> Don't do that, the dog said. Roar, roar, roar. <laughs> not if it's out to be or not. <laughs> but anyhow, this target was down like almost eight inches, a very faint signal, but I dug it anyways and I got a bunch of gravel. You can see how close I am to the front steps of the house. So that kind of gives me hope that there might be stuff deeper here, like some large pennies that have to slow down and concentrate on this area. But we're leaving shortly. I got a fish scale. He always gets a fish scale. So I don't always get a fish scale. But there you go. Close enough. Yeah, close enough. And it's a, uh, it's a Georgie fish scale though. So I'm not really rubbing it, just removing the dirt. Okay, so I went to change the memory card over on the camera. Hey, what are you gonna do? Anyways, it's a fish scale, and uh, I can barely see it, but Judy's already looked at it. 1917. But that's good though. I mean, the next time we do come, when the fields are clear, we can concentrate a little bit more on the front lawn and listen for the deep ones because there you go, fish scale, right in the front of the house where we didn't find anything before. I mean, other than I got the shot penny too. Yeah. Oh, hold on. I thought we did find other things here, but I don't remember. I think it was closer to the front of the house, like the side front of the house. Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah. The front side of the house? Yeah, I got a shot penny. Looks like a bullet hole in it from uh, 1964. That's an American, uh, it's an American uh, memorial. So, mm -hmm. and it's been shot. So that's kind of cool too. Anyways, two coins. We're getting ready to leave real soon. I gave us another 10 minutes, but give us another 10. Yeah. I'm good with that. I'm heading that way. Like, oh, fishy. Bye-bye. Sorry. You're not sorry. <laughs> <laughs>